Michelangelo, Leonardo, Donatello, Raphael, Splinter, what they all have in common? They destroyed their enemies. In the artistic sense, of course. My friends, do you really believe that people paint because they enjoy painting? No! They do it for the intellectual dominance they can impose upon lesser humans, for which there are many. This may seem superior, like myself, Louis Gadetti. So learn from my wisdom and inexplicable genius as I paint for you yet another highly intellectual still life. Skull. Striving for nothing less than perfection, I take my time in setting up the best possible position for the skull. I refrain from any detail at this stage, as you well know if you have seen any of my previous masterfully executed videos. The reason for this is because if you detail the work from the start, but then realize the proportions are incorrect later, you will have to shift everything and you will have wasted all that time detailing. My friends, one of the many noble goals I have on this channel is to help you. Not just to be more like me, a master painter and tactician with explosive genius, but also to be a faster and more efficient painter. Speaking of which, avert your eyes for a moment from the almost perfectly finished skull and notice my big brush. This enables me to cover more surface area faster. But Lewis, how do you get tiny details with it, you might say? It's quite simple, really. Learn to use the smallest part of the brush, and you will be surprised that you do not need every tiny little brush imaginable for many smaller areas. I will continue working with this for a good part of the painting, which will save me a lot of time because I don't have to switch between brushes as much. I'm a genius. Before I continue, allow me to apologize to those of you who no doubt have been awaiting with bated breath this, my next video, which I originally intended to release a week sooner. Trust me, it could not be helped. As a top-notch painter, my work finally got the best of me, and I was consumed by it for the entire week. Guys, get on the cart, get on the cart, touch it! We lost again. And that one's not my fault. That one's all on you, Poo Poo Waffle 97, all the way. I tell you, you're really falling off. And I'm just curious. How is it that you got killed by Junkrat when you're on Farah and you have a rocket launcher and a jetpack, and he only has grenades that he can't even aim with? Huh? That's my question. For quicker paintings such as these, I tend to paint directly onto the board with paint instead of drawing it out in charcoal or pencil first. However, if you are first starting in art, I would recommend drawing out first before you paint because it is easier to do so, especially given the difficulty of controlling paint. The reason why I don't do this myself is because my brain is about three times larger than all other painters, so everything comes easy to me. But also with a brush, you can cover more area faster and get the overall impression of what you are seeing. The faster you get an impression, the quicker you will get to color and detail, thereby increasing your work production to unfathomable levels. In paintings that I take more time on, I might keep it in the simple stage a day or so longer depending. But since this is a quick four hour study, I start darkening the background and adding color once I am confident the drawing is in the ballpark. At this initial stage of adding color, it doesn't need to be the exact color. Focus more on the light and dark values and use the color to shape the painting. My dear peasants, one of the most valuable lessons I have to offer you besides my genius is more of a mentality pertaining to the truth of oil painting. And that is, whatever stage you are at, whether it is in the initial blocking, adding color, or detailing. Always do so to create the big shape. Always look at the entirety of your work, no matter what task you are performing. This can be very hard at first, and it is very tempting to focus on the color or tiny details that are fun to paint. But if you can pull this off, you'll find that your work remains more accurate and ultimately more realistic in the end. Studies have shown that it can triple brain size as well, just in a few short minutes. It's science. Once I have the basic shape and light impression of the skull, I proceed to paint the teeth in. Notice the expert movements guided by wisdom and experience. Wow, Lewis, you are painting the teeth in with such a big brush to which I respond, yes, my simpletons. My brush is very big and I know how to use it. Using the smallest part of the brush enables me to shape the teeth quite nicely and if I want, I can work around the painting with it as well if my expertly trained eye catches something it does not agree with like your face. Guys, one of the keys to painting is to spend your time wisely and to be more consistent with your work. Always think about what you're going to do before you paint. Doing so will also have the added benefit of helping you cut out procrastination, which I never do anyway. Ah, oh, Baptist was giving you a hard time because he got buffed. No, he didn't. They simply tweaked his primary fire on his biotic launcher by reducing the recovery time from 0.45 seconds to 0.38 seconds. But his damage was reduced from 25 to 24 as compensation in the latest patch, version 1.0.7.384. It's totally different from patch 1.0.6.597. <laughs> I think we all remember how that one turned out. Once the teeth have been caught up to the rest of the work, I continue my drawing of the skull, especially up top, around the forehead area. Remember, drawing doesn't just mean the obvious contour. It also pertains to the interior shapes, or forms as we intellectuals like to call it. There are shapes within shapes. All of them have their own color, light value, and transitional edges. 
As I said before in my last video where I easily painted the greatest landscape painting ever in history, you're welcome. Larger shapes like my biceps are made up of many smaller shapes. I am at the point now where I'm bringing up the light in the forehead while fixing the larger shapes and by extension the smaller shapes by sculpting the form. I will not intentionally model an area if I think the surrounding area is incorrect, which for me never is because I'm so good. Originally, I planned to just paint the skull and have everything else much darker. Kind of an artistic move, if you will. But upon further observation, my insurmountable intellect notified me that the skull was now floating, something I had feared would happen from the very start. So I decided to make the skull rest upon the surface by adding in the foreground. This immediately gave it more substance and atmosphere because there was now a second element besides the background to complement the skull. I still chose to keep the foreground darker than what I observed in nature because frankly my mind is far superior to nature and I'm constantly having to make improvements upon it. Once the foreground is worked up, I go back into the teeth and while looking at the entire painting, I shape them and adjust the light values. It is important to note that I am trying to get the color more accurate at this point as well, but my main concern is always the drawing. Trying to observe the individual gesture of each tooth also helps in capturing them. I work my way up to the eye sockets where I work on the form and unify the light so it flows with the rest of the painting. As my expertly trained eye catches more and more in this painting, I feel very grateful for being an expert in patience and good use of my time. Such traits I naturally embodied the moment I exploded out of the womb. Ah, uh, really? Again with the biotic launcher. You know what? You know what you can do? Suck my biotic launcher. How do you like that? And you know what else? If you keep this up, I'm going to take an apple and shove it in your freaking mouth and roll you up in some bacon. You'll find that having patience in art will bring about a greater artistic maturity in your own work. And I have found that the values persist, I learn in painting can be applied to my daily life. And shove it so Consequently, far I'm brimming with patience and wisdom on a daily basis. And I encourage you to do the same. Your ability to speak. Come again? I don't care if you're 12. I take the foreground color and shape the cheekbone with it. I need to improve upon the form of the skull, especially around the sides and cheekbones, so I simply continue to move about the painting as I see fit. Again, I am striving to understand from different angles what I am looking at. This will give it the depth my work is most in need of at this point. Since I have brought the light up in the forehead, I notice I still need that flow of light around the mouth area, so I take this as an opportunity to correct any drawing mistakes I have made, especially around the teeth, while I work the light up. To do this, I imagine the mouth area as a semicircular ball that has light slowly arcing around it as it fades into dark. I have spoken at length about this in the most interesting video in the universe about drawing an egg, which for some reason I keep mentioning. I'm not done with the teeth, but being that everything is connected, I transition up to the nose to correct some minor shape issues there. I swing up to the side and fix proportions that are preventing the skull from turning. The expression is there, but drawing improvements can always be made. I adjust the side gesture of the skull by working the background into it. I continue to shape the shadow while I'm using the background color. This will help the skull to appear like it is resting on a surface which increases its three-dimensional feel. As I work around the painting, I use this as an occasion to rest my eyes on other areas so that when I return to them, I'm able to notice flaws easier. Using this method, I return to the teeth and continue working on the mouth with the goal of giving it a proper flow of light along with the correct form. Finally, I make sure the skull is resting on the foreground by adjusting the foreground values by working on the teeth and shadows underneath the teeth. I sign the work with the blood of my enemies. And with that, I have served humanity by raising painting standards yet again to unspeakable levels. As promised, I have delivered another explosion of information to your face. Use it wisely, not because you enjoy painting. Use it to prove your intellectual dominance and obliterate lesser peons with it. And then give me the credit.